So other variables we use are ones like unemployed, poor person, non-English speaking, where we've identified immigrants and refugees by the one language they don't know. <laughs> Single parent, addict, offender, old person. God, I get increasingly sensitive to that one. <laughs> Which the process in Seattle called aging your way, brought older people together. The number one thing we heard, we want the opportunity to contribute. We spent a whole lifetime getting skills, knowledge, building relationships. Now we're just valued for our needs. We're just valued as clients. The other end of the spectrum, at-risk youth. We hardly ever talk about young people anymore without that adjective. Who's got more energy than young people? Who's got more creativity than young people? Who's got more at stake in the future of our community than young people? And who are the experts on young people more than young people? And yet we sit around and we talk about the youth problem. We don't have a youth problem, we've got a community problem where we aren't engaged in the gifts of our young people. And disabled. We're discovering more disabilities all the time. More and more people are falling under that label. How many people in this room have no disability? I see eyeglasses. My disability is my memory. It gets worse every year. When I'm applying for a job, I don't say I have a disability, but please hire me. I'm trying to think of some gifts I have. And yet there's a huge section of our population that we think of solely in terms of their disability. And we just focus on what people are missing. They become clients in the service system. We focus on people's gifts. They become citizens in our community. And then we wonder why all those individuals aren't involved in our community work. It's because we've defined them out of our community. We need to lift off those labels and focus on everybody's gifts. Quick story.